Hi, I'm Brandon Sanders with Quantum Forensics. We offer forensic engineering and investigation services. And today we will be discussing the residential electric hot water heater and some of its components in depth. Okay, this is your standard residential electric hot water heater. What you notice is that it's uh, got two separate heating elements, one here and one here. Down here at the base, you have the drain, which is commonly used for maintenance, kind of drain out some sediment, um, or just to, to drain it and possibly move the water heater. Uh, as you can see on these heating elements, each one of these heating elements has a separate thermostat ranging from 90 degrees to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. If I scroll up here, you see the second heating element uh, with its own separate thermostat. Those are the components to heat the water. Uh, on this side of the heating element, we have the cold water in, where the cold water goes in, and this actually has a tube that circulates all the way down to the bottom, therefore the cold water goes to the very bottom of the tub. Um, and then up here on the top, you have the hot water out, which is just a short connection up top here, which we'll see later on. That way, you know, when you're, you have the demand inside the residence, it's only getting hot water. And then here, this component that we have is the pressure temperature relief valve which is uh, used as a safety device. We will be taking this off and examining its components uh, shortly. Next, we will be discussing the thermostats on an electric hot water heater. Usually there is a separate thermostat attached to each heating element. The thermostat is what regulates the temperature of the water. As you can see, this particular thermostat adjust temperature ranging from 90 degrees to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And now it should be noted that thermostats in a residence should only be set between 120 degrees to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures higher than these recommendations can usually lead to premature failure in the water heater along with higher risk of injury from burns. We will now be removing and examining one of the heating elements. The way this device operates is by having this 12 inch metal rod protrude into the tank. The metal rod then generates due to electricity passing through it, which in turn radiates heat in the water, causing the water to warm to the desired temperature, which is controlled by the individual thermostats we just discussed. As you can see, there is rust and sediment covering the rod. This usually indicates there's a lot of sediment in the tank and potentially that the glass liner has failed, causing the steel tank to rust. Once the glass liner has failed and it still begins to rust, the water here then begins to leak from multiple orifices. As you can see, the lower drain orifice does have signs of leaks also with rust. The lower heating element also shows signs of leaks, which you can see the rust around here, along with the upper heating element also shows signs of leaks. You can see the rust beginning to exit the system. This is the most common failure in a residential water heater. This component is usually found at the bottom of a water heater. Its main purpose is to drain the water from the unit. Now, it is highly recommended that all water heaters be drained and estimated once per year to remove any of the sediment and debris that has collected in the bottom. What this sediment can do, if it's not drained, can aggressively attack the glass lining. A lot of times this corrosion can cause the eat of the glass lining and then it gets into the steel tank causing the, the steel tank to rust and corrode which in turn causes leaks. One other issue this sediment might cause is the decrease in life expectancy of certain components. For example, if this sediment gets caked onto the heating elements, the sediment will act like an insulator and not allow the heat to radiate properly into the water. The heating element is then forced to operate for extended periods of time, causing premature failure in the heating elements. Next, we will discuss the temperature pressure relief valve. This valve is used as a safety device in the instant your unit exceeds the temperature or pressure limits. This device operates by simply using the force of a spring to monitor the internal pressure. If the internal pressure inside the tank exceeds the limits of the spring, the spring then deflects and allows relief of pressure. Now a couple safety precautions regarding this valve. First, as a homeowner, if you start to see a slow drip or leak or some corrosion buildup here at the base of the valve, this is a good indication that your unit is malfunctioning and experts should be called immediately. Second, as you can see, the inside of this valve is actually threaded. 
Now, under no circumstances should a plug be screwed into those threads. We have seen it multiple times where the valve has a slow drip and the homeowner attempts to stop the drip by plugging the valve. But if the valve is plugged and the internal tank pressure continues to rise, there is no way for the pressure to relieve itself. Now, if the pressure in the tank cannot be relieved, there is a good chance that an explosion might occur.